educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the July 18th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always let those fingers do the walking. That means go ahead and send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside that subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got all the U.S. indices trading to the upside. Dow's up 82 points, about a quarter percent, half a percent for the S&P, or 21 points, a little over 1 percent for the Nasdaq 100, 133 points there, one and a quarter percent for the Russell, 22 points there, one and six tenths percent for the semis, 43 points there. The trendies are up one and six tenths as well. That's 209 points to the upside. You've got the uh, spot volatilics is up 40 cents, but still trading well below its 50-day exponents moving average. That's still a positive for the S&P 500. Gold's up six bucks. Silver's up 24 cents. Lights we crude is up 418. Natural gas is up 41 cents today. Is going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count with regard to natural gas. That does suggest that there could be a top that forms between today and Wednesday. 30 year treasures off one point and six thirty seconds. Trade out at 138.27. Lead the charge dollar wise. The upside you've got. Uh, booking holdings, 77 bucks, four and a half percent. Chipotle, a 47 bucks, three and six tenths percent. Tesla, 26 bucks, three and a half percent. Mercado Libre, three and a half percent plus at 25 points to the upside. To the downside, it's Gorilla Technology Group, of 13 bucks, 35 percent. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals off two percent or 12 bucks. Thermo Fisher, Scientific off one and six percent, 1.6 percent. That's nearly nine dollars. CGen is off nearly nine dollars or five percent. So we got plenty to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. But let's go ahead and begin by taking a look at the uh, general markets out here. So let's start with, uh, let's see, where am I at? Screen-wise. Let's start with just understanding market breadth. Let's focus in on the ES Mini or the S&P 500. Is that all right with everybody? I see everybody shaking their hands saying yes. So let's switch over and take a look at what's going on there. Now here we're taking a look at our TAS market profile breath. We've got our four different speed dials up right now. 60 minute, 240 daily and the uh, weekly. And we can see that the only one that is in a bearish setting is the weekly time frame. So let's just start with the weekly. We'll get that up on our screen here. Now when I say bearish setting or whatever terminology I used out there, what I'm referring to is the number of instruments that are trading above the top of a weekly profile versus those trading below the bottom of weekly profile. And right now it's the bottoms that have the uh, advantage. And that puts us into a bearish crossover. And that says that to continue to expect this uh, choppy market that we are in. You have 49 instruments trading above the top of the daily, uh, top of the weekly profile, whereas you've got 216 trading below the bottom. Now the weekly is the one that is the uh, real thorn in the side of the bulls. The daily is not. The daily had a bullish crossover, 279 instruments I apologize, 149 instruments above the top and 74 below the bottom. 
we take a look at the 240 minute time frame chart that is more bullish 261 above the top 57 below the bottom what comes to the 60 minute time frame chart out here you got 281 above the top 50 below the bottom out there so we've got that for you why don't i let me see if i get this up here pretty quickly because i know there are i see some folks are short and uh, the S&P 500 specifically. And so what I was going to try to do, what I am going to do, I'm not going to try to do it. I don't try to do anything. You either do it or you don't do it. You know what I mean? And so uh, let's go take a look at, let me get this here so I can pull this over. Let's look at the 30-minute time frame, just kind of to, not kind of, to assist you with, what, with regard to what the markets are doing here, the S&P 500, that is. So in the case of the 30-minute time frame, you can see you are still in a, a pretty decent bearish crossover. What that means is you have 246 instruments trading below their 30-minute profile and 54 trading above the top. So we want to go take a look at the multi time frame charts here for the S&P 500, try to give some guidance for where there might be some support levels. Now, let's switch over to our white background charts out here. And the white background charts will have uh, some real good intraday time periods. But the ones that we want to really, I suppose, focus on will be the 60 minutes. So the interesting thing about the 60 minute time frame chart, as we open this up, what we can see here is you got to wave number seven. That was letter G. And that was the high that was put in. There's also a sell the D point, A to B, B to C, C to D, all the way up here. That took place at about 6 o'clock this morning. And now what we have is prices trading below the bottom of its profile. So ordinarily, I would say to you that the target to the downside would be 38.50. But knowing that the 60-minute time frame has a bullish crossover in place out there, we're not going to say that. Because I don't, I think that would be somewhat disingenuous. Now, it's not that it's impossible, but positive market breath says, hmm, something to think about. Now, we saw the 30-minute time frame chart did not have positive market breath. It had negative market breath. So for the ES Mini, let's go ahead and pull that open. Now, in the case of the ES Mini, it also, on a 30-minute time frame, from wave number seven, that was up here at the top, it was also a sell the D-point pattern. And price right now, as we came on the air at 1 o'clock, did close below the bottom of its bullish structured 30-minute profile. 38.88 is the number to watch out there. If price remains below that as we come into 130, then this is going to suggest that you could see a move to the 38.70 area. 38.70 is the TD9 count breakout level. You've got wave number four. That's letter D. So that always says uh, be cautious out here. Only be cautious. Uh, Basil likes to say, rightfully so that sometimes you get something different that happens after wave number four out there. You and I, we like taking a look at that seventh wave out there, letter G, that often identifies tops and bottoms. Does it always? No, but when it's present, you pay attention to it. So here on the 30-minute time frame chart, it says you could get down to the 38.70, we're at 38.86 out there. But knowing that that 60-minute market breadth has that bullish uh, crossover, fairly good market breadth out there. Good idea, as uh, the folks in the den are, continue to move your stop to the downside and protect some of those profits. Now, we look at the other charts here for the ES Mini. If we look at the five-hour time frame chart, the bar that's currently present will close in 46 minutes at 2 p.m. Looks like that is going to confirm a TD nine count top. Now, you can get a TD nine count top. Our number eight so far is the high of that pattern, right at TD nine count breakdown resistance of 3,975 cents out there. So, we take a look at where this is suggesting prices target. That would be its awesome change line. Currently printing at 3850 level. Gotta take things one step at a time. Get back to this break and show you some of those other steps. Consider Steve Rowe with TF and N. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 72. SP is up 18. We're taking a look at the ES mini charts out here. Both the five hour, four hour time frame charts have uh, valid, uh, confirmed TD9 count tops out there. In the case of the ES mini, it looks like it's bar number eight that's going to uh, generate that topping uh, pattern. In the case of the 240, it was the bar following bar number nine. Both of them have oscillator and change lines, which have changed colors. Now, typically, when you get a top or a bottom and you have that in play out there, that's when we start to see price pull back to that area. Now, it could be a rising line with price pulling back. But right now, the price targets are in the 38.50, 38.55 level out there. And I would say if we look at – okay, now as we go from those larger time frames down to the smaller one, if we look at a 10-minute chart, price in essence right now is testing the breakout level, 38.84 and a quarter. We're trading just below that. If that gives in a 10-minute bar, we've got one minute, less than a minute here for that to occur out there, then that says the next target becomes the next lower level or higher level up 15-minute, 38.79. If 38.79 cracks, then the 30-minute chart, which has a sell the D point pattern, would bring into play 38.70. If we get that below 38.70, then we'd be looking at that 38.55 area. Below that, then the 38.49. So it's one step at a time. And what you want to do as kind of your laboratory experiment is watch how price deals with each of those areas out there. And, of course, for their specific time frame. So that was a 10-minute again at 38.84. The 15-minute was at 38.79. The 30-minute uh, was at 38.70. And then the asset and change lines, you've got those for the multiple time frames out there. Uh, so that's what's going on inside the ES Mini. Now, not surprising that we're seeing the markets pull back. The daily time frame, which did close above the top of its profile on Friday, in its trade above the top of that profile, you can see where we've got this just simply bearish candlestick formation. Those become resistance levels. In fact, we've got two different evening star candle formations out there. So that had already set up that uh, 39.22 to 39.50 was your resistance zone because of those candle formations out there. But it was the intraday charts and the sell the D point patterns. Uh, that the subscribers and I took a look at earlier this morning saying, hey, I know we've got a nice rally out here, but we've also got topping signals in these intraday charts out there. And they have most certainly taken hold. And it does look like they want to take hold uh, for a little bit longer out there. But remember, the other thing to remember out here is we do have this positive market breadth for those 
three of the four primary time frames, 60, 240, and the uh, daily out there. So that's uh, the ES Mini. Let's do this here because I don't want to get uh, behind on the uh, request out here. We can always come back and take a look at the markets. We can go take a look at the NQ next. But right now, let's go to one of our first questions, or let's go to our first question out here. This one coming in from Tim M. And what Tim wants to do is take a look at two different ticker symbols. The first one is Apple. So uh, Tim writes it. He says, I uh, hope, uh, hope your weekend was great. It was. How could it not be great with all that uh, you, uh, uh, open championship uh, British Open Championship uh, golf that was on. I, I intended on golfing yesterday morning, trying to sneak out early, but uh, God had a different uh, thought in mind, and that was to uh, pour like cats and dogs over here on the beach and a little bit of thunder and lightning, and that said, okay, no golf. Just watch golf on television. But anyway, let's get back to the question from Tim. He says, could you please take a look at NVIDIA daily and weekly, looking to take a long position? When the setup is right, also time permitting is Apple about to complete a TD9 count on the daily. Question mark was considering long there as well, but uh, could hear Stevie and Lee Corso say not so fast. That's correct. Thanks for all you do. So in the case of Apple, Tim, what I'm not showing here is the A to B equals CD pattern. That's another way. I'll just draw the A to B line in here. We'll just move the A to B line over to the C point out here, and so you'll see you've got a whoops. You'll see you've got an A to B equals CD pattern that is underway. Price exceeded the one to one level out there and so the next bearish reversal candle that would show up would set up the Gartley sell pattern out there. We don't have that right now. Price is trading above the top of its profile. The next area where it may uh, target is the prior highs out here. Those prior highs, what we'll do is we'll switch over and take a look at what's going on from a volume perspective. But the June 1st high out there is at the 151.74. That would become the price target. I'm not suggesting that you get in on this trade here right now, especially knowing that you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD. And I suspect that we have light volume today. In fact, right now I've got my other chart. Uh, I can just tell you off screen. You're at 32 million shares as we speak. We've been trading for four uh through 10 through them to one, yeah, four hours. How do you like that uh, math that I'm able to do? So let me get that going. I'm going to see what the straight line um, linear math looks like. So you've done 32 million shares. Says that today's volume is about 52. So the swing point that is trading into, Tim, is uh, from uh, June the 1st. We already mentioned that. That had 74 million shares. You're moving into 52 million shares out there. Yeah, so it doesn't look like it wants to bust it out. In fact, did price test the top of that swing point? That's interesting. 151.74 today's high is 151.57. No, hasn't tested it and rejected it just yet, but you do have lighter volume, so no reason to get in. Now, if you did get a top out here, one of the first places you'd look at for a potential entry point into Apple would be about the 143.82 level. That's the current daily oscillator and change line. Um, what else do we have out here? So you still like that TD9 count bottom on the weekly, price trading above the top of its uh, weekly uh, oscillator and change line out there. All that looks pretty good. It's the volume aspect that is a bit concerning. Volume and price. If price can catapult that 151.74 level, then it may be off to the races to the upside with price wanting to target the 163 to 167 level out there. But uh, I would just sit tight. Um, and it, it looks like we should at least get some type of correction. Maybe it's just tomorrow. Uh, that's uh, you know that's really a one day correction out there. But I, I would sit tight and I would watch the 147.55 level. That's the top of its daily profile out there. And I, I just shared with you the metrics on the volume, so we don't need to do that. You also wanted to look at Nvidia. Nvda. Nvidia is uh, home of the Pelosi's out there. You got to love that, don't you? I mean. Goodness gracious out here. What a political system we have. But let's get NVIDIA up on our screen out here. Let me get this going on the white background charts. So NVIDIA, I can share with you here, it's going to pop up shortly, is uh, price is trading above the top of its daily profile, and it's setting up also an A to B equals CD pattern. This was this is confirmed with volume. So the swing point that NVIDIA is taking out was the swing point out here from uh, July the 8th. That July 8th swing point had volume of uh, 46 million. You're already doing 42 million shares out here. So you're going to have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, I'm just going to do this on my other set of charts out here, and I'll give you where those price projection levels are. Not that price is going to hit them exactly, but we're already above the one-to-one. -one. The one-to-one -one was at the uh, 164.47 level, one to 1 169.86, almost nearly where today's high took us to. And above that, 176.72 would be the 1.618 A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, Tim, the time to have entered 
really NVIDIA would have been on the uh, trading day way back here when it formed that Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom on July the 5th when it formed that uh, bullish engulfing candle out there. Now, price is likely to run into resistance, and that's at the weekly red oscillator and change line. So that level, that price would need to cross above. So I wouldn't have you selling resistance, or buying resistance, I should say. And you've got another A to B equals CD pattern. Oh, by the way, on Apple, you would ask me, there was no, uh, uh, there was no TD9 count uh, to be paying attention to. Uh, out there. So uh, so we do not have that as a account to worry about. You don't have that to worry about in NVIDIA as well. So we can see that price has tested the bottom of its weekly profile, the weekly profile uh, bottom of that box at 167.66. And it's also run into resistance or is about to run into resistance at the 160, 169.61 level. That's that red oscillator and change line. And the monthly chart says, hey, I still have some work to do to the downside. I'd really like to tag 134.59 out there. So I think it's too late to chase this, but on a pullback, it could be looking at maybe about 150.38 in NVIDIA if we were to get that. See Rhodes with TFN Ed. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's move on to our second question out here. That's the only thing we've got in the queue. And uh, this one is from uh, Les J. Les writes in, hey, Steve, happy Monday. Back at you. Happy Monday to you. If you get time, well, we've got the time. We're making it right now. I uh, uh, Can you uh, look at uh, a buy for Costco? I am looking to buy Costco long if I get a pullback. Yeah, long if you get a pullback. That makes sense. So if we take a look at Costco, now not shown on the white background screen here is the A to B equals CD pattern. You can visually see that. And what you'll see here, I'll, again, I'll just draw on the A to B line. We'll move that over to C, that we are at the one-to-one -one level as we speak right now. Now, look. You, this I'm not suggesting that you sell Costco. 
even though it's at the one to one price level. And the reason is, look, sixty percent of the time, I'm taking this from a, uh, I'm taking this from all the work that uh, Larry Pesmento did many years ago, decades ago. So I don't know if it's changed, but the work that he did several decades ago suggests that sixty percent of instruments that form A to B equal C depends will stop at about the one to one level, and the other forty percent will go on and do something else. Well, for me, I can flip a coin to do heads or tails and get a 60-40 out there. So that's not really a terrific set of odds out here to go ahead and sell the D point. In fact, that's what led me to trying to figure out, well, how can we figure out when to sell the D point? And what I, what, what I determined out there in studying all kinds of A to B equals CD patterns was wait for the bearish reversal candle. And that's one of those, in this case here, an A to B equals CD to the upside. There are several others. We're not going to go through them now, but they are shared uh, on my uh, archived uh, workshops that uh, subscribers get to uh, listen to. But you are at the one-to-one -one area out here, and that does say then what you want to do less is look for some type of bearish reversal candle to suggest a retracement or a pullback or a top. In this case here, you've got the oscillator changed on, which has also changed colors, and you have a profile uh, that price closed above a couple of days ago on Thursday at 505.55, and that oscillator changed on is 497.39. So on a pullback out there, and I agree with you, it should be on a pullback. Those would be the areas to look at. Of course, we'd want to go down to a short-term time frame chart, see if there's some kind of bottom signal that forms as price is pulling back to those levels, that would be ideal. You also have the weekly time frame, and price is dealing with its resistance level, where the sellers are located. The top of that profile, that's up at the 528.11 area. Is there anything else out here that I can share with you? I wish there were, but there's not. So I'm with you. I think you should just uh, uh, stay, uh, stay put. Don't do anything. Don't chase this here. And uh, wait to see if you get that bearish reversal candle, then a pullback, and then consider that 497, 505 ish type area out there. So, Les, thanks for taking the time to write in. Very much appreciated. And let me just check here, make sure. Uh, nope, no more questions that have come in via email. Uh, nothing that I see inside of the tiger stand out there. So what do we want to do next? I think what we do next is let's go back and take a look at the uh, from a date from a daily standpoint or what's going on general market wise. Oh, I've got a call. Hold on a second here. Hold on a second here. Let's go out to Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Nice to hear your voice in a moment. I'm doing great, Steve. How are you? I'm doing uh, doing very well. Uh, uh, thanks for the call. Sorry for the hold. Didn't realize that you were on the line. Um, ticker symbol SLX, the steel ETF out there. I believe that's what you're calling about. Uh, tell the folks uh, what you're doing, how I could best help you. Well, I was debating whether to just have you look at individual, you know, uh, stocks or just do this, you know, basket of them. Because uh, it just seemed like there was a fair amount of them. We looked at them before and I went with Rio because it had completed its pattern. Okay. But then there were some others that hadn't done that. And I think over that period of time since we last spoke, that did happen with Oh, like Valley, and there's, I think, even Cliff and some of those. So I don't know what's going to make the most sense to look at, but I just gave you that one to look at. Well, let's do both. Let's do this. Let's first take a look at SLX, and then we'll go flip over to my white background charts and take a look at Rio Tinto. How's that sound? Sounds good. Perfect. Okay. So we take a look at the SLX out there. Um, what was it? Was it an A to B equals CD completion that got you into this uh uh, area, or what was the pattern you were looking at? That is, yeah, that, that's what I was primarily looking at. Okay, perfect. So we take a look at SLX. This has a uh, uh, a nice big hammer candle. Not big, but it's a hammer candle that formed on July 5th, folks. And you can visually see how that confirmed the buy the D point pattern out there. And now what price is doing today, Brent, it's uh, taking on its counter trend rally resistance level. And that's at 48.86. And the reason that we come up with that is because we can see here that this is a bullish structured profile. Price closed below the low of that for more than two sessions. And therefore, uh, the studies show that if it's just a counter trend move where price will find resistance is at that center line. That center line is at 48.86 and price is trading at 48.47. So that's what it's doing. You'd like to see a close above 48.86. Um, and, you know, where is that close that you'd like to see it? I, I don't know, but somewhere above that level that then would suggest a move up to the 50.85 area. On a weekly time frame chart here, I don't see a, I see the A to B equals CD pattern, um, but I don't see anything else in prices well below 
the um, well below the bottom of its profile out there, and on the monthly time time frame chart, price below the bottom of the profile there as well. Um, let me let me do uh, yeah. Let me switch do one. I want to do one thing here if I can, and that is just look at a daily time frame chart for SLX out here. So I'm going to just put this up on my chart. Uh, I just as opposed to going to multi time frame or something, which takes a little bit more time to upload. So I just want to take a look at this. You also have that nice Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. Price is above its oscillator and change line. So that's good. Uh, I guess I want to look at this now on the weekly for you too. Uh, just to see, I'm, I'm just curious as to where prices in relationship to anything on the weekly time frame, such as the oscillator and change line. And here I'm going to pull this over, just the weekly chart. And so I don't really have a bottoming pattern out here on the weekly time frame, Brent. So just sharing that with you, it doesn't mean it hasn't bottomed. It just means I don't have one of my bottoming signals out there as we speak. So any questions about XLX before we go take a look at Rio? No, I appreciate that. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. Okay. So let's go switch over, take a look. Let's go to my uh, white background charts here. Momentarily, we'll take a look at uh, Rio Tinto and just see what it is uh, doing, what it's trading into. We've got the white background charts. Now let's switch to the right screen. And now we've got our daily, weekly, and monthly time frame. So in the case of Rio Tinto, on uh, what we have today, what we had on Friday, was from a daily perspective was a wave number seven bottom that was letter G today's gap to the upside I see a lot of gaps so I think this is a currency thing but that's confirming the Rhodes momentum indicator bottom um, in the case of Rio where, whereas SLX had that uh, bearish structure bullish structured uh, daily profile we don't have that same kind of pattern inside of Rio so the general sector watch that level because you'd really like to see price close above the center of that profile in the case of Rio Tinto its level of resistance is going to be 5859 Brent and that is the bottom of its daily profile if price can get inside there then it's suggesting to you and I that it should make a move to 6030 or 6116 any questions about the daily time frame chart no, I kind of got dropped there for a bit, Stephen. I came back, so I'll just – I can listen to it in an archive, but I, I got most of it. So Okay. Well, the, the, the important thing was 58.59, and that's the bottom of its daily profile. So if price can get above that, then you should be able to see it move to 60.30, 61.16. On the weekly time frame, much like in the case of, uh, of the uh, sector itself, the ETF, I don't have a bottoming signal here, nor do I have one on the monthly time frame out there. So it's very possible that this is more of a trade than a longer-term investment, at least at this stage of the game. But Brent, I hear music in my ears. If you'd be kind enough to hold on through this break, I want to make sure that I've answered all your questions or any new ones that you might have. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back with Brent in Martinez, California. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it could seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we've got the charts here for Rio Tinto up on my screen. We've got the daily, weekly, monthly time frame charts out there. Brent, uh, uh, any questions about what we uh, what we reviewed, what I reviewed out there? Is there something maybe that I'm missing on the uh, weekly or monthly uh, chart that maybe you've taken a look at that, that I should reconsider? No, I think that's it, Steve. I'm just taking a shot here with the man with the AV equal CD pattern, and <clears throat> I have a pretty tight stop, so it either works or it doesn't. Normally, I, I don't give it a lot of leeway, you know, just okay. see how it plays out. And like you said, it's, most of what I've been doing lately has been, of course, more on the of a trade than <laughs> being something longer term, but it just depends on the trade. <laughs> sure, sure. So what I did during the break here, I know that uh, one of their primary raw material products is copper, uh, in the case of Rio Tinto. And so the chart that I've got up on my screen right now is our correlation chart. Now, this is correlating the top panel is Rio Tinto. The uh, uh, center panel is high-grade copper, just a continuous contract. And uh, the bottom panel shows a five-day correlation. When there's a positive directional correlation, bars will be above zero. And when there's an inverse correlation, bars will be below zero. So you can see this is really heavily correlated to the uh, direction of, um, of high-grade copper. Any questions about this chart? No, thank you for providing that. So now we're going to go switch back and to make a determination whether that, uh, you know, we, we should be concerned about the weekly or what have you. I'm just kind of curious, what is it that copper, what the doctor is telling us? Now, in the case of Dr. Copper out here, and I've got that up on our screen right now, you've got a, and I, I just put up the continuous contract here. I should have put in the September contract. But in the case of copper, what do we have? I think shoot so I, I i thought this morning when i looked at the september contract there was actually a roads momentum indicator bottom pattern uh that was in play out here i don't see that right now uh out here for copper but i was really more curious quite frankly brent about the weekly and the monthly time frames to see what they show out here and uh, if you could get a, a bullish reversal candle this week so let's assume that you're able to stay in this trade out there, even with your tight stop. If you could get a nice bullish reversal candle on the weekly, then you'd at least get a buy the D point pattern, which, by the way, it had up until Friday towards the end of the late of the session. But by Friday, copper closed below the bottom of uh, the prior week's low, which was a bullish hammer candle out there. But, you know, it's got some life right now. So I pay attention to copper as well, just simply because of that heavy Correlation. Did I change screens out there? Yeah, okay. I did, I did change screens. So, any questions about that, Brent? No, thank you so much. I was going to let you know I, it's an area I know you spent some time, and I was able to be lucky enough to be down at Pacific Grove last week, and this oh, really great. beautiful area, and, and nice, nice to be down there again. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Well, you live in a beautiful area. Yeah, I'm very fortunate. <laughs> I know I yeah. am. To be in such a great place. I have everything close. If I want to go up the mountains, it's not far off. Go to the ocean, it's close. I mean, everything's nearby. So I'm lucky to have that. 
Yep, that's the way it's supposed to be. Hey, Brent, always good to hear from you. Thanks for the call. Much appreciated, and uh, best of luck to you on that uh, Rio Tinto trade. All right, thank you so much, Steve. Have yourself a great day and a great week, and I'm sure I'll be able to talk to you soon. Sounds great. Thanks for calling. Let's go to our next. Oh, we don't have a, a question. I thought I might have had a question that came in by email. We don't. So uh, I think we were going to go take a look at I was going to go move over to our uh, to the NQ. That's right. We're going to go take a look at the NQ, kind of do what we did with the uh, S&P 500. So let's take a look at the NQ. And uh, the NQ, I think, is perhaps the more important indice for you and I to uh, track. Where am I? I'm on the white background chart. So what the uh, I'm going to switch back for a moment to the black background. I'll show you the levels to really be paying attention. I think it's 12,197 off the top of my head, but we're going to um, make sure of that here for you momentarily. Uh, let me get back here. It's going to be right here. So it's this right hand chart. I'm just going to simply expand it out. So here is the uh, daily time frame for the NQ, which uh, got up to a high today of 12,18650. And it's 12,197, that is the bottom of that profile. And that's the level that has acted as resistance two other times. Is a third time a charm or is a third time a resistance level? And it's a slightly lower high than it was the prior one. And the prior one was a slightly lower, lower high, the one before that. So what this says to Stevie is uh, be careful out here. Definitely says be careful uh, because price has gotten up to resistance. Now, is that be careful uh, supported by the intraday charts out here inside of uh, the NQ. So let's go take a look at it. It's five hour time frame has a confirmed row, uh, TD9 count top. And that says that price here should pull back to 11,977. That's the area for you to watch here, 12,040 right now. If price were to close below that, then you'd be looking at 11,916 as a price target. The uh, 240 minute chart also has a TD9 count. No, it does not. 240 minute chart does not have a TD9 count top. So it's the five hour chart that you're paying attention to out here. There most certainly is a sell the D point pattern that has formed and the, uh, is forming right now on the two hour time frame chart. That suggested you could see the NQ pull back to the 11,740 area out here. The next downside price target. So the 30 minute chart has a uh, sell the D point, has wave number. Uh, did that take no, it has a wave number seven pattern out there. And price right now is taking on its key level of support. That key level of support is 12.043. That's the area to watch. We have about 12 minutes left in the uh, in the current bar that it's uh, uh, forming. And if price closes below that, and you can see on the 15 minute, price is cruising below its 12.043 level out there. That was a breakout area. So price is below those breakout zones. Don't know where it's going to end at uh, 2 p.m. But if it is below 12.043, then the 60-minute time frame chart, which has a confirmed Rogeman indicator top, suggests looking at 11.957. Okay, Stevie, you just gave everybody a ton of numbers out there. All right, let's uh, circle back here. The levels to be watching. The levels to be watching are 12.043. A close below that is going to suggest that price gets down to 11.977. And if price gets below 11,977, 11,957 would be the number to be looking for as a target. So now we've, we've, we, we summarize that to three numbers that you want to pay attention to when you're watching the NQ out there. So where else does that leave us? Uh, that, I don't know that I can provide you with much more information than that other than – I guess the information would be, good question out there, was uh, what's going on with regard to the market breadth for the NDX 100? So let's go take a look at that. Good question, whoever asked that. It, it was just, it was like coming in through my ear out here. And right now you've got that. So, the, you know, this is the interesting thing. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, daily, 240, 60, all still with positive market breadth out here. Here's the weekly chart. And uh, 10 instruments trading above the top, 21 instruments trading below the bottom. Again, here is the thorn in the side. Of, uh, of the uh, NASDAQ 100 out here. Um, and that's why we're seeing, you know, some of this uh, pullback. I would think that's why. Well, plus price hitting that resistance level or very close to that resistance level. That was that bottom of that daily profile. Isn't it cool that you and I, be able, we, we have that information to assist us to interpret why is the market doing what it's doing out there? Uh, to me, I just think that's the greatest thing. We take a look at the daily time frame out here. You got 42 instruments trading above the top of their profile, seven below the bottom. If you take a look at the uh, four-hour time frame chart, you've got uh, 64 above the top, 10 below the bottom. And finally, the hourly chart out here, 
what we've got is 60 above the top, 18 below the bottom. What that suggests here, choppy market, expect a pullback. Uh, if you're a day trader out there, the levels to be watching are the areas that we discussed before we started taking a look at the TAS market breadth information. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, uh... <clears throat> This morning or this afternoon, we covered uh, Apple for uh, one of our uh, one of our viewers out there. I think it might have been uh, Tim that had that request in. And uh, since then, we've seen a, a little bit of a sell-off in Apple. Now, I don't know what it's going to look like at the end of the day. But we did cover the A to B equals CD pattern. Right now, you do have a bearish engulfing candle. Um, and if you do get that bearish engulfing candle, that says uh, you'd want to watch 147.55, then about 143.52. On the weekly chart, Price finally got above that red oscillator and change line. That was a resistance level, and now it may become support. That's 148.02. We've been down to a low of 148.09. So I'd say the real level to watch here is 147.55. If you get it close below that, that then is going to signal uh, that price should move back to the daily oscillator and change line. And that's at the 143.50 uh, level out there. So, Tim, that's the area to be watching and observing while you go take a look at the intraday charts to see if there's any kind of a, a bottom pattern is forming there. 
As far as anything else of uh, significance out here, nothing that I see. Well, let me see here. There might be a request from SNP. It is, can we take a look at EQT? So we're gonna. that's how we're going to finish out the show. Sorry that I overlooked that. EQT is going to pop up here momentarily. Make sure we're on the right screen. We are. Let's see what this is doing. Come on. Come on. Fire away. EQT. It's taken so long. What is taking so long? There we go. So we take a look at EQT out here. You're going to become bar number six today. Friday was a, uh, no, Friday's not helping us. So you got bar number six. You're above the top of the profile. An A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Looks like it wants to continue moving higher. A bearish reversal candle would confirm a sell the D point pattern. You are moving into a prior swing point. That's the swing point out here. SNP from June the 29th. Quickly, let's see if I can figure out volume wise what it's doing. Moving to that swing point, which has volume of uh, 10 million shares, you're doing it. You're only at 3.2 as we speak. So you're moving into a swing point with light volume. Nonetheless, you can take that level out. Next target to the upside, the price can take out that swing, would be 40.94. But a bearish reversal candle would be a sell the D point. Folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear is up next. I'll see you tomorrow on Terrific Tuesday. Have a magical, magical Monday.